Good to see you, Tate. How's it going? It is going well. We got a lot to talk about. We got media day happening right now, but we also have a huge trade that we are all trying to figure out who won the trade, who lost the trade. Did anybody win the trade? Did anybody lose the trade? Of course, I'm talking about Carl Anthony Towns going to the New York Knicks and then Julius Randle, Dante DiVincenzo going out to Minnesota. I'll just start there, Howard Beck. How are you reacting to this? And uh, are there any winners in this trade? Yeah, us. We won. <laughs> Yes, the good. media, the media, the fans, the public. It was kind of a quiet summer on the NBA trade front. We were kind of overdue for a blockbuster. So we all we're all winners here. Mm -hmm. um, now, listen, I think in in the, uh, the the simplest sort of reductive view of this is that the Knicks won, right? They got the best player in the deal. I don't think anybody would dispute that Carl Anthony Towns is the best player changing teams in this trade. So by the usual measure in the NBA. The Knicks win. The Knicks, I, I want to talk about where they sit right now. They do get their center in Carl Anthony Towns. If you just look at the matchup of the Knicks going up against the Celtics, right? I mean, Carl Anthony Towns versus Porzingis, that's a fun matchup. Two stretch fives, two bigs who, uh, you know, obviously have their very unique skill set. You also have OG Ananobi matching up with Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. Uh, Mikel Bridges is there now with the Knicks. So you can kind of see the blueprint for why they made these sort of moves. Like, where does Towns fit in? And where can, and how can the Knicks kind of take that next step with him in the fold yeah and it's interesting to take to consider where the Knicks are because if they don't lose Isaiah Hartenstein to free agency over the summer and they were in a position where based on cap rules they just could not pay him as much as the Thunder did but if they don't lose Isaiah Hartenstein to free agency and to the Thunder if they don't lose Mitchell Robinson to ankle surgery that's keeping him out until probably January or potentially later I don't know if they're still making the move or not maybe they would mm. but this is where they are and where they are is as you just outlined they're in a great position to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Celtics. I'm not saying they're better than the Celtics. I'm not saying I'm, I'm certain that they can beat them in a best-of-seven series. But they're really well assembled now to try to do that uh, all the way down to, yes, both teams have stretch fives now. They can both play five out. They both have elite defenders. And the Knicks have gotten, over the last year, acquired the kind of defenders in Ananobi and Mikhail Bridges um, throw Josh Hart in the mix, who they already had, and you've got a bunch of guys you can throw at Brown and Tatum. So I think the Knicks, they're yeah, you know, like the whole theme here is that they are all in from the moment that they made the trade for Ananobi and then rewarded him with a massive contract, max extension, uh, mass, uh, max new contract, I should say, over the summer and sending out all those picks to get Mikhail Bridges and now going for Towns. The Knicks see a window here where Jalen Brunson is firmly in his prime, has just scratched the surface of his stardom. They've got a bunch of really good role players around him. They needed another reliable star, and in this case, Carl Anthony Towns, who fills multiple needs, especially because of their gap at center. Yeah, we might not call them the Villanova Knicks anymore, but they could be the Wildcats, right? I mean, there, there's some other nickname there. I mean, you know, Carl Anthony Towns, he's a Kentucky Wildcat. They're all Villanova Wildcats. So maybe we find some sort of middle ground there with the nickname. Uh, I'm excited to see what the Knicks look like 